Hi, this video will explain about chapter 5, uh, cellular respiration and fermentation, but specifically for 5.1, aerobic respiration. Under chapter 5, there will be aerobic respiration, and the second uh, subtopic is fermentation and its application. For aerobic respiration, the learning outcomes is for students to be able to state the needs for energy and the role of respiration in living organisms. Then, should, students should be able to outline the complete oxidation of glucose which involves glycolysis, Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. What is cellular respiration? It is defined as a process that occurs in cells that break down complex organic molecules into simple molecules, which is, which is also termed as catabolic reaction. So cellular respiration, the purpose of cellular respiration is to produce ATP. ATP is our energy. And cellular respiration involves redox reaction. Redox reaction involves oxidation and reduction. As we can see from the uh, the diagram here, first we uh, the, the substrate or the main uh, the main source of energy is the glucose. Okay, the glucose. But with the use of oxygen, and at the end. The cellular respiration should yield carbon dioxide along with water and energy. Okay, in a simpler way, we need sugar, we need oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, energy and water. Why do we need the energy? Energy is needed for active transport, for muscle contraction so that we can move for reproduction and growth and for excretion ingatkan whenever we uh, we sweat we remove our heat uh, to the environment the main roles for cellular respiration is to produce energy in the form of atp so atp is used to perform to perform work to movement an instant source of energy for living organisms and then produce heat energy. So energy flows into the ecosystem as sunlight. This is our source of energy and lives as heat. Photosynthesis generates oxygen and organic molecules such as sugar which are used in cellular respiration. So we get our substances from photosynthesis eh, from the autotroph. Cells use the chemical energy stored in the organic molecules to regenerate ATP that powers work. Let's look at the structure of ATP. The, na the full name of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Tri here means three, so we have three phosphate groups. So the three phosphate group is here. One, two and three and this is a ribose sugar this is the adenine so ATP consists of ribose sugar nitrogenous base which is the adenine and three phosphate groups so this is an example of a nucleotide uh, a nucleic acid sorry a nucleic acid each phosphate bond contains high energy, especially the third group. So the first, the first phosphate group is the, the one that linked to the ribose sugar. Second and the third. So the bond that uh, the bond between the second and the third phosphate group contains a lot of energy. When energy is needed, ATP will be hydrolyzed. So the hydrolysis of the unstable bond between the phosphate will release the energy.
energy will be transferred to cell which required energy. So this energy will be harnessed by the cells that needs the energy. ATP can be resynthesized from ADP. Once the ATP lose one of its uh, of its uh, phosphate group, it will be called adenosine diphosphate because it has only two phosphate groups left. So the resynthesize uh, the resynthesization uh, the res resynthesis of ATP using energy released from the cellular respiration by attaching the phosphate group through a, a process named phosphorylation. So whenever the molecule receive uh, the process that attach the phosphate uh, to a molecule is called phosphorylation. The ADP is phosphorylized meaning that the ADP receive the phosphate in organic uh, with, uh, with the consumption of energy, it will produce ATP along with H2O. There are two types of cellular respiration, which is aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So, since aerobic respiration requires oxygen, anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. Aerobic respiration is a process when a glucose is completely break down. So the word completely break down is very important. Meaning when it is, it is broken down completely, it will produce carbon dioxide, water and also energy. And this complete breakdown um, requires presence of oxygen so you have to memorize the definition okay complete breakdown so complete breakdown uh, will produce carbon dioxide water and ATP. this process involves redox reaction which is uh, a couple uh, of oxidation and reduction at the same time Okay, oxidation is an addition of oxygen for any process that remove removal of hydrogen or the loss of electron. While reduction is the contradiction of the oxidation. When one molecule uh, receives oxygen, meaning that it received from another molecule. So the molecule that lost the oxygen will be said to reduce. Or when one molecule remove hydrogen, the hydrogen will be accepted by another molecule. So the molecule that receive the hydrogen will be said to be reduced. Same, uh, the same thing goes with the loss of electrons. So you have to remember and understand this concept. Aerobic respiration involves three metabolic stages. The glycolysis, the first stage occur in the cytoplasm of the cell. The second stage is the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix of mitochondria. And the third step, stage is the oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation involves electron transport chain and chemiosmosis which occur in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So, these two stages, these two processes uh, occurs in the mitochondria while glycolysis, glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So, if we look at the di this diagram, it shows that glycolysis, the breaking down of glucose into pyruvate, occurs in the cytoplasm then the pyruvate will be transported into the mitochondria and undergoes a series of reaction a few processes involved in the mitochondria okay this involves link reaction link reaction is a process to prepare the pyruvate that enters the mitochondria so that it will be uh, easily used in the krebs cycle and then after Krebs cycles, 
uh, the electron and the hydrogen will be involved in the oxidative phosphorylation that occurs in the cristae or in inner mitochondrial membrane okay the The next thing that you need to know is the ATP production. The production of ATP involves a few types of processes. The first one is called substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so phosphorylation is the process of addition, uh, uh, addition of the phosphate into a molecule, uh, into the molecule. The molecule is the substrate. So during this uh, this stage, the substrate level phosphorylation, uh, the substrate is, uh, for example, in glycolysis, glycolysis, the substrate is either the sugar, the glucose, or the fructose. You will learn the steps one by one later on. So during substrate level phosphorylation, ATP will be generated during glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So it involves a few substrates, a few substrates according to the process. Glycolysis, different substrate. Krebs cycle, different substrate. So the changes, the conversion of the substrate into another molecule will yield ATP. Then the second ATP production is the oxidative phosphorylation. This oxidative phosphorylation is a process uh, that occurs in the mitochondria which produce more ATP than the substrate level phosphorylation. So, remember, there are two types of ATP production, substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation. So, the most energy comes from the oxidative phosphorylation, during which ATP is generated um, in, during ATC, osmosis. Let's look at left substrate level phosphorylation. ATP is formed when an enzyme transfer a phosphate from an intermediate substrate to ADP. Okay, the substrate, for example, here the substrate is phosphoenol pyruvate. Then the phosphate from the phosphoenol pyruvate is transferred to the ADP, thus produce ATP. And the uh, substrate uh, will be um, converted to pyruvate since the phosphoenol pyruvate lost the phosphate group to the ADP. The energy uh, substrate level phosphorylation involves the energy from the breakdown of substrate used to form ATP. So, uh, the breakdown of substrate involves the phosphoenol pyruvate, lah, for example. Okay, the phosphate released from the phosphoenol pyruvate and then bound to the ADP. So, ATP is generated in glycolysis and Krebs cycle. Eh? Substrate level phosphorylation involves glycolysis and Krebs cycle. But the amount of ATP produced is small or less than the ATP produced by the oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation is a formation of ATP using energy derived from redox reaction of the ETC. So ETC is electron transport chain. Remember just now when we explain about redox reaction, the loss of electron from a molecule is the oxidation and the receive the addition of electron from uh, for uh, to a molecule the molecule is reduced so uh, this redox reaction um, produce uh, energy then the energy is used to bind the phosphate in organic to the adp so atp is produced we will learn in details about that later most atp are produced through this way Oxidative phosphorylation yield more ATP than substrate level phosphorylation. So, in glycolysis and Krebs cycle, some electrons from the substrates will be transferred to a cofactors, the NAD plus and FAD. Okay, you'll have learned that NAD plus is an example of a cofactor. 
NAD plus and FAD forming NADH or FADH2. So NAD plus when it receives hydrogen, it will be converted to NADH. FAD receive hydrogen, it will be converted to FADH2. So NADH and FADH2 pass this e these electrons to the ETC. So this is the ETC. Okay, one complex one, complex two, three, four. Okay, so this is the ETC. Electron will be the name is electron transport chain. So this is the chain. An electron will be transported from one molecule to another molecule. So ATP produced from glycolysis is substrate level phosphorylation. Krebs cycle ATP, another ATP from substrate level phosphorylation. Then electron from Krebs cycle is transported to the electron transport chain and then undergo uh, redox reaction. And at the same time, uh, oxidative phosphorylation occurs, produce ATP through oxidative phosphorylation. Reduction is the gain of one or more electrons by an atom, ion or molecule. This will re, uh, example is reducing NAD plus except two hydrogen atom to form NADH plus H plus. Okay? It must be written together because NAD plus receive two hydrogen atom. So one and two. The loss of electrons from a substance involved in a redox reaction. Example, succinate is oxidized when two of its hydrogens, succinate, lost two hydrogen to FAD. So, uh, succinate converted to fumarate. The FAD received the hydrogen forming FADH. Another term that you need to understand is decarboxylation. D. D is a removal. Okay. A uh, reaction in which a molecule of carbon dioxide is removed from a carboxyl group of an organic acid. So, in a way, it is said that the carbon carboxyl group is removed in the form of in the form of carbon dioxide. So, when it is removed, it will uh, become a carbon dioxide and uh, release from the molecule. And uh, another, uh, at the same time, another process is involved. So the pyruvate lose, losing, uh, lost a carbon molecule in the form of carbon dioxide. And at the same time, it is bound with a coenzyme A and converted to acetyl CoA. If the following redox reaction occurred, which compound would be oxidized and reduced? The compound that is oxidized is the here C4H6O5. The compound that is reduced, the NAD. NAD receives hydrogen, loose hydrogen. Okay, that's all. Thank you.